That 3D model giving you a hard time? Well, I'm the man to call. This is the first episode of Fix My 3D Model in the video coming up. What's going on, you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi, and welcome to my first episode of Fix My 3D Model. I'm kicking off this brand new series where you send me your 3D models and I'll fix them for you. How this video came about is Lyra hit me up on Instagram and she was struggling with some paneling detail on a curved surface and those could actually be pretty tricky. So I decided to help her out, make the video, and hopefully uh, if you guys are struggling with some similar issues, this will help you out as well. If you like the whole concept of me helping you out with your 3D model and attending a live Q&A webinar where I take your questions live on the spot, join my hard surface modeling bootcamp using the link down below. So this is a spaceship right here and this is the part that um, she wanted me to work on. So I'm going to go in here, isolate this and as you see, um, she was actually struggling trying to get these panel lines uh, to wrap around. Uh, this uh, larger uh, curved panel here. So what I'm going to do is just remodel something that looks very similar to this. So I'll go ahead and start by just grabbing these faces, holding down tab, and just scooping these up like so. And then I'll go to I'll go to Edit Mesh and then Duplicate. This is just going to create a copy of those faces. So I'm going to bring my outliner here. Sometimes when you duplicate or extract, uh, some of these faces are hard to see. And if they're not connected, you see like these two weren't actually connected in the mesh. Uh, so it made a new one. So uh, we're going to go on ahead and combine these. So I'll combine these into a new mesh. And then from here, what we can do is grab this guy, move it over. And since this is isolated, we could just de-isolate everything again. And then just take both of these and isolate them. And let's go ahead and clean the history up here. So that's a little bit cleaner. So what I'll do from this point is clean this up. I don't need these edges right now. And let me go ahead and merge these verts. And I'll just make a mental note that uh, this is pretty much where the panel line needs to go. Uh, you see that we do have these hang inverts, so I can just select those and hit delete. I can just activate my target weld and weld that up. I'll go in here. Same thing. I'm just going to select all these, hit delete, delete those hang inverts. And then on this corner, we can start actually cleaning this up a little bit. And I know my panel line is going to go there. Just merge these down as well. When I begin modeling uh, something like this, um, I like to keep it pretty simple, pretty low res. And the panel lines, I like to cut in and actually add a bevel at the same time, pretty much of all the edges that actually need to be uh, thickened out and then pushed in to become a panel line. I'll go in here and just scoop up this vert. And I'm going to increase my manipulator. You can do that by hitting plus or minus on your keyboard. So what I'll go ahead and do is just uh, select these edges, hold down shift. We can just extrude this and then we can scale flat, right? So now we have kind of a similar uh, pretty much curvature here. We're going to go ahead and start uh, pretty much carving out or planning our panel lines, right? So I'll go ahead and get my multi cut here. And we see that we have uh, a panel line coming this way. So we're going to need a, a loop here. Uh, one thing you'll notice about the multi-cut is that uh, there's really no way, to my knowledge, to actually change the averaging, right? So you see that this is uh, this result's going to be average. But if we get the insert edge loop tool, uh, we could actually pull a straight edge. With the insert edge loop tool, you do want to make sure that under the settings, uh, this is set to equal. If you go to relative, it's actually going to still average out kind of like the multi-cut does. So keep that in mind. So we'll go back to equal here and I'll just exit out of this. 
and now I can just drop just a straight panel line kind of like this here I don't mind it being averaged out so we can go ahead and drop one if we want to drop it right here in the middle of these two we could do control middle mouse click with the multi cut and it's going to drop it right in the middle of these two edges let's go ahead and get this angle right here so I'll go ahead and click from here to here and then I'm going to repeat the process from here to here so one thing you'll notice is that right now we have a try, right? We have a try uh, just because of the way this angle is working. So I try to avoid tries early on. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually route this this way, right? So I'll go this way, this way, and this way like this. I'm going to delete that. Now one thing you'll notice is that um, we added resolution, right? Uh, but we didn't really move this. So we're gonna wanna push this up. If not, when we go in sub D mode, uh, this is actually gonna cause a flat spot. There's a couple ways of doing this. What I'm, probably the easiest way here is just to uh, select all these. Hit D to edit the pivot. And then I can hold down control to basically align it to that face. And now we can just push out in that direction. Doesn't have to be a lot, uh, but we do want to break that flatness. So what I'm going to do here is activate surface slide. And for that, uh, we'll have to go in the modeling toolkit here. So I'm going to bring up the modeling toolkit by selecting this. And I'm just going to drag it here into the screen. And what I want to do is actually enable the transform constraints. And you see that I already have them hotkeyed because I use them so much but we have surface and we have edge slide. Uh, and for this, I'm actually gonna use uh, surface. So I have that to shift S and that's just gonna allow me to turn that on and off on the fly. But I'm just gonna go ahead and push this and just space that out a little bit. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing here. What I'm gonna do is drop a vert here. That, that way um, it acts as a stopper, right? You see this vert kind of broke up on uh, the quad and it won't allow it to go this way. And then from here, what I'll do is I'll just connect this. I'll go this way with it. I'll go this way with this one. Delete these. I can uh, get rid of that vert. We need to basically feather these out as well. So that looks good. And then just take these, delete. And now you see that we pretty much have our panel lines. Uh, and then we kind of routed this to keep everything nice and quadded. Same thing as before, we can go in here and push these out a little bit. So we can orient here to this face. And then we need to turn the slide off. And then we'll push up. And you see that we're breaking up that flatness. And I'm going to just repeat this here towards the bottom. So I'll go down this way. And then I can take these guys here and delete. Now you see that we're quadded here as well. And then we could go ahead and slide these guys around. And now this is where we start laying down our panel lines, right? So I'm going to just take a look here just examine that pattern. So it looks like we're gonna go like this, like that, and then we wrap around, so that looks good. And I am gonna just change it up just a little bit from the original, but overall the pattern is gonna be very similar. So from here, I'll go ahead and go to bevel. I'll bevel this once. It's about the thickness that I want. That looks pretty good. And now I'll go ahead and and now I'll go ahead and just select um, all these inside here. You can hold down tab as well. And I'm just gonna push these down like this. 
And I'm just giving this a quick look. Sometimes corners, uh, when they're pushed along the normals, uh, they can get kind of weird. Like right here, you see how it's not really being uh, too precise. So I'm going to have to fix that manually. You see that if we bump this back up, we're nice and good. And then uh, right now we're getting a little bit of distortion from that panel line. So you do want to be aware of that especially when you're pushing and pulling along normals. Sometimes uh, things can get a little bit uh, weird. Uh, so I'm just going to orient. I'm going to hit D, and then I'm going to hold down Control to orient uh, my pivot uh, to this edge. And now we can go ahead and just kind of get a little bit of that volume that we lost back. So let's go ahead and hit 3 here, go into Sub Ds, and uh, this is looking pretty good. Obviously, it's not going to hold up well because we don't have any holding edges, but... Overall, so far, so good. So let's go ahead and start adding some holding edges. I'm going to go ahead and go to my insert edge loop tool. Just drop one there. Drop one there. Here. Here. And here. And we're going to do some, uh, we're definitely going to need to do some edge flow work here because I can tell you right now this is going to pinch, but we'll fix that in a second. Just make sure everything's being reinforced. One thing we'll have to do here is delete these faces. Anytime that you extrude in um, and you have a center line in your model, you will have to go in there and kind of gut those out just to get that clean profile. So let's go ahead and hit three here, see what we get. Let me go ahead and turn off wireframe on shaded. And let's go ahead and apply a blend here. Uh, what a blend's gonna do is just make it uh, a little bit shinier, give you some specular highlights. And that's gonna go ahead and expose uh, any uh, pinching that you have, right? So, so we'll go ahead and apply a blend. So it's not looking bad. Um, we are getting just a little bit of pinching just because uh, these the proximity of these two edges. We're going to want them close here because it's going to hold this up, uh, but we can feather these out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'll go in here and we can just grab probably... I'm going to mainly worry about this, this side, not too much of the back side. So I'm just going to grab uh, this range here and then... We can go to surface slide, but actually what we can do is actually change this from surface to uh, edge. And we can go ahead and push these out and we can start feathering them out. So uh, we want the most compression here, uh, but what we can do is pretty much just kind of feather these out so they're not so close. And that's going to probably help a little bit of our pinching issues. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that for pretty much the bottom here and the top. Sometimes when you hard surface modeling like this, if we hit three, you see that we're getting a lot of spreading. So sometimes what I like to do is just introduce a little bit more geometry overall. That way we get more compression when we go in sub Ds, right? So if I go in here and activate the uh, multi-cut tool and just drop it in the middle, see that uh, this is actually just gonna spread out a little bit less. And believe it or not, that could actually help uh, when you're getting kind of these uh, these little pinching spots. And what I'm going to do here is just go back to edge slide. And let's go ahead and just give this a little bit more breathing room here. Uh, because I am still getting pinching. Uh, no matter what you do, um, if you have two edges close enough together, uh, you will have pinching. So um, I will go back in here and just slide these out a little bit more. Yeah, and that did it right there. So that looks a lot better. Uh, I don't see any pinching at all. If this try caused by the bevel does bother you, uh, what you can do is actually just turn this into a diamond uh, junction. This is pretty easy. All you're going to have to do is just come in here and uh, drop a loop right there. And you see that right now that's a diamond junction. And if you really want to sell it like a quad, you can go ahead and just do something like that. So that's quaded out. I think this looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go in here and just add another uh, edge loop to reinforce this edge. And 
and one here as well. That doesn't look too bad at all. So now let's just finish this up. So I'll go ahead and get my pivot here, put it right here on the center line. And now I'll go ahead and just mirror this guy over like so. I want, to, I want this to be on object. And this is gonna have to be mirrored over in the Z. And that's pretty much our finished model here. So let's go ahead and bring up the wireframe. So this was our old uh, model right here. And this is pretty much the new one. And we have a similar pattern with the uh, panel lines. And we have that panel line just going around and cleanly uh, turning that corner. So that's the end of the video, folks. I really appreciate your time. Hopefully I helped some of you guys that are struggling with your hard surface uh, modeling within Maya, especially if you're doing kind of these uh, panel details uh, similar to the model that I was working on. Until we meet again, folks, I will catch you next time.